Hello, welcome to this lesson of Mastering Java. Here we're in lesson four. We're going to begin to talk about classes and objects again, but now we're going to actually write the code to show you how it's done. And I want you to think back to the last lesson that we just learned uh, when I tried to tell you that a class definition in Java is just a template for making something. The thing that you make is what we call an object. So think back to that example and keep it in your mind as we go through this lesson and as we go through the future lessons. Um, the example we used in the slides was a class called vehicle and it defined things like the color of the vehicle and the top speed of the vehicle and the number of passengers in the vehicle and things like that. Uh, and then from that template or that class we can define an object that's a specific instance, a creation of, a, of something in memory that is going to use that template so we could create an object for a Corvette and populate those variables with specific information. We can create an object for a pickup truck. We can create an object for a minivan. We can create an object for, you know, an 18 wheeler, whatever. Uh, those are all of class vehicle or of type vehicle. So we're not going to create a vehicle class here. We're going to change it up a little bit and create uh, just for purpose of illustrating something. We're going to create an aircraft class which is again something that's a general category. You know all aircraft have wings, um, they have some way to propel themselves through the sky, aircraft have certain speed, they have certain fuel capacity and things like that. So we're going to create a class um, called aircraft and then we're going to use that class to define some objects of specific types of aircraft that, that exist. So in order to create a class, notice that this is the, the blank template when we create any new program in Java here in the Eclipse editor. Uh, where it says public class lesson 4 up here. This is the name of my program, lesson4.java. Inside of it is the main method and you all know that uh, execution comes into the main method uh, and that's how we've been doing all of our programs so far. But when you create another class uh, you're defining out something outside of everything that we've done here. So you need to go down to the bottom curly brace. Notice that this opening curly goes with this one. So you need to go outside of that to define your class because it's existing outside of this and then we will go from there. So what you do to create a class is you use the class keyword. Notice that when I type the word class it turns purple and then I have to create a name. And so in the slides we were dealing with vehicle. That was the name of our class. Here we're going to create an aircraft class. Um, so I'm going to name it aircraft. In fact I'll just make it a lowercase a aircraft and I'll put a space and I'll put an opening curly brace and when I hit enter Eclipse automatically puts the closing curly brace for me. So notice that nothing is underlined, there are no problems here. Java knows that I'm creating a new class called aircraft. Uh, I have an opening curly and an associated curly, closing curly uh, there. Now inside of that class is my opportunity to define any variables, any member variables for this class and later on in subsequent lessons down the road we'll also put methods inside of this class um, that can operate on the data. But for now we're just going to be putting characteristics of an aircraft. There's lots of characteristics of an aircraft. For, for this we're going to talk about how many people can this aircraft hold. That's always going to be an integer number of people so I'll call it um, integer passengers with a semicolon there. Notice I'm not putting any number, I'm not assigning a number to it because that's not the purpose of this. This is a template. We're not going to assign any numbers until we define an object that's a specific type of aircraft. What else could we have inside of an aircraft class? We could have cruise speed like this. So this aircraft might go 150 miles an hour, might go 300 miles an hour, but we know that every single aircraft is going to have a cruise speed with it and yes you could define your cruise speed as a double if you wanted to define it as you know the top the cruise speed in terms of 350.5 but most times when you look up an aircraft speed in a book it's going to be a whole number so let's just keep it as an integer. Now also every aircraft has a fuel capacity, has a fuel tank and we want to describe that as a double because usually when you look that up uh, it'll be a decimal value so an aircraft might have 50 0.5 gallons or 50.75 gallons of fuel capacity that it can store on board. So we associate that with a double. And then also every aircraft might have something called a fuel burn rate. You can think of this as um, almost like miles per gallon in terms of um, in terms of what you might have uh, uh, seen for a car. Well an aircraft burns fuel in terms of gallons per hour. So I'll just put a little note here. Gallons per hour right? 
And then this over here will be gallons. That's the fuel capacity that the tank can hold. The cruise speed could be in miles per hour. A lot of times aircraft miles uh, uh, speed is, is um, in knots, which is nautical miles per hour. But anyway, for this example, we'll just call it miles per hour. You could also use kilometers per hour. Whatever. You can use any measurement you want, but it's still going to be a speed. And this is just going to be a number of people because that's how many people the aircraft can hold. So we have created a class. We're naming it aircraft. We've defined the class to exist between these curly braces and everything we're keeping track of in our craft in our aircraft class is how many passengers it can hold, uh, how fast is its cruising speed, um, how many gallons of fuel can it hold, and how fast does it burn that fuel? How many gallons per hour? Does it, so an air, aircraft might uh, you know, suck down five gallons per hour when you're flying or 10 gallons per hour or something like that. So, of course, aircraft have lots of different characteristics. You know, you could put in this class, you know, length of the aircraft, wingspan of the aircraft, um, how many bags can it hold? I mean, there's many, many things you can put inside of, a, of an aircraft class, but for the purpose of this example, we're going to, to just leave it alone. So let's go ahead and save it. Uh, there are no errors. There's nothing underlined anywhere uh, inside of here. Now, remember that the purpose of a class is a template. It, nothing's actually stored in memory right now um, because we haven't created any objects. An object is sort of like a physical thing, as much as a computer can hold physical things, you have to realize. But a class is just the template. When we associate it with an actual object, that's when memory is allocated and that's when memory is assigned to hold whatever these variables are going to hold. And the way you do that is you have to create the object. So there's two parts of this. You have to first have a class definition and then you create your object. So you go up here into the main method because that's where program execution is going to start. Now let me point out to you something uh, a little obvious first before I create this class. Let's say, or right, before I create this object, let's say I wanted to create an integer variable like we've done many times before. I would type an integer, let's say I wanted to call it var1 and I would assign it equal to five and I would put a semicolon, right? Or if I wanted to create a double, it'd be double var2 equals 3.65, something like this. We've been doing this a lot. You know, we have the type of variable we're creating, the name of the variable equals, and then the value of the variable. That's something we've been doing all along, right? Now, it's very similar when you create an object. See, here we have the, t the class name, which is the template for the type of object uh, that we want to create. So much like we have to type integer, we have to tell Java what type we're trying to create. So we type aircraft, right? So we have aircraft, uh, and then we want to give it a name. So let's say uh, this is a very popular airplane, airplane that you can go rent at an airport, Cessna 172. You probably have heard of that, all right? So this is the type, much like integer is kind of like a type. This is the name of our object, much like var1 is the name. Now we have to put something in it, right? So we do an equal sign. Um, now you don't just type a value, um, so, because this is actually an object we're creating. So you use the new keyword, aircraft. And then you have to put the two parentheses there and hit a semicolon. Now I want you to make sure you understand, I'll put a little note here, creates object of class aircraft. This is very, very important for you to understand this line because you're going to see it a lot in Java programming. Basically, it's exactly the same. Now, I shouldn't say exactly. The way it, it creates objects is a little bit different than what we're doing up above, but conceptually you can think of it this way. Integer is the type, var is the name, five is the value that goes into this. This is the class, this is the name, and inside of this placeholder we're putting a new object of type aircraft. That's what we're doing. So at this point, and only at this point, um, in memory, there's, there is an object that, we're, that is named Cessna 172. It is of has the characteristics of the aircraft class. So now associated with this name is a variable that holds passengers, a, a variable that holds the cruise speed, a variable that holds the fuel capacity, and a variable that holds the fuel burn rate. All four of these variables are now associated with this name because this is an object and because we've declared what this class looks like. All right, now let's say I actually own two airplanes, which I don't, but if I did, um, I wanted to create another one. Let's call it aircraft. That's the, the, the type or the, the class there. And the name of this is a Piper 
Saratoga. Again, another very popular aircraft that seats more people and it goes a little bit faster. So that's the type in the name, set it equal to new, and what are we creating? A new object of type aircraft. And you have to put the two, uh, the two uh, parentheses here. We'll talk about why the parentheses are there a little bit later. You can kind of think of it almost like a function call that comes down here or, an, or a method call that comes down here and just kind of starts this process off of creating this object. But we'll get to it a little bit later, um, the actual details here. But for now, just notice that you have name, or I should say you have type or class, and then you have name, and then inside of this you're assigning a new object that's created. So at this point in time, you have in memory an object called Cessna 172 that is of class aircraft that has these variables associated with it. And you also have another object called Piper Saratoga, which is a totally different aircraft. But it's assigned the same variables because it's a part of the same class. So these two objects now exist in memory, and in future lessons we're going to learn how to to put numbers into these variables because you know obviously the Cessna 172 seats four people all right and the Piper Saratoga seats six people so and of course the speed is different from a Cessna to the Piper and so we're going to learn how to, to actually assign values to the member variables to the instance variables that are defined down there now I want to say one more thing before I move on so first let me go ahead and run this just to show you that when you hit run uh, the program is run. Notice how it changed down here. There's no output because we, we didn't put any print statements, but there are no errors. I just wanted to kind of show you that, that, that everything's cool and that the uh, program is well constructed. Um, let me go ahead and comment this out, though, this class definition. I want to just drill it home. I told you that this, um, this uh, object creation is sort of kind of like what we have up here, right? And, and it kind of is when you think about it because I can do int json. And then in the next line, I can do JSON is equal to 5, right? And I can, of course, choose to um, put all this in one spot and put it all in one line, integer name equals whatever. But I can also split it up into two lines like this. In much the same way, you could do the same thing with this object definition. You could say aircraft, Piper, Sarah, Toga, right? That is just assigning the name to the class, right, just like we just said a minute ago. And then in the next line, you could say Piper, Sarah, Toga, and you got to put something inside of it, new aircraft, like this. This is really accomplishing the same thing as what I've commented out right here. If I hit save and I hit run, I don't have any errors. Everything's created just fine. So if you really want to put it like this, you can. You're very rarely going to see that in Java. Most of the time, you're going to see it like this. It becomes second nature to have the class name and then the name of the object that you want is equal to a new instance of that class. So you're allocating this in memory. You're putting it to this name. Now both of these guys exist in memory. So make sure you go off and do the exercise for this lesson. Um, because I'm constructing the exercises to give you practice. You can look at this and understand it and really feel like you got it, but you don't really understand anything until you go off and do it yourself. So go off to the exercise and you'll see I have a different kind of class that I want you to create with different variables and um, and then you can instance your own objects there uh, in the exercise. And then after that, follow me on to the next lesson where we'll finally learn how to access these variables that are part of the class and are part of these objects here in Java.